Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got an epic one for you today. We're going to start our look at Call of Cthulhu by Metallica. So this is the uh, instrumental track that ends the Ride the Lightning album. Uh, we are in standard tuning here. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the rhythm guitar parts. A couple of unison octaves uh, bends at the end. Uh, but uh, I'm going to, in the video in a couple days, I'm going to show you all the harmony guitar parts in uh, uh, Kirk solo. So, uh, but we got a lot to get to here. So um, let's jump right into it with that intro riff that I just played. Just have a nice, simple, clean tone on there. Nothing fancy. Maybe a touch of reverb. And um, this riff is a little bit tricky to play. Uh, and the way uh, James plays it live now, uh, for one note, um, well, I mean, I, I, he might do it sometimes and not do it others. Um, but uh, he, sometimes he'll leave it out. I'll, I'll point it out, but it is on the recording, so we're doing the studio version here. So let's start with this first chord. That's the tricky one. So we're going to start here. It's based around a D minor. Open D string. And what you're going to do is you're going to bar um, across the, the high E and the B string of the fifth fret. And you're going to play the seventh fret with your pinky on the G string, and then the sixth fret on the B string with your uh, um, middle finger. So we have this. So it's open D, high E, G, B. Now you're going to take your ring finger and play the seventh fret on the D string. So the bass note changed there. And you're going to pick up, when you do that, you're going to pick up your uh, middle finger. So now you have that fifth fret there on the B string. You pick five on the B, five on the high E, and then back to the six on the B string. All right, so here we go. So that's the pattern. So it's kind of weird how you're laying this note on the D string and then you're lifting up the, the, the middle finger. So we have this one more time. Repeat. All right, so it's the first one. So right there we have this. We have this open D, this uh, sixth fret on the high E. So basically just hold this chord shape. Bar the six on the B and the high E and play the seventh fret there on the G. So you're gonna play the open D, then the high E string, then G and B. So it's kind of the same pattern there. And then we're going to play the 8th fret there on the D and the 9th fret on the G. Now this 9th fret note on the G is something I see James Hetfield leave out now a lot live. He'll just, um, he'll do it kind of like this next chord shape that we're coming up to. So, but it is on recording. So we have this, it's the 9th fret on the G and then the high E string and then the B. Repeat that. And then you hear a little slide in there. He slides up to this position. And it's basically the same pattern again, just two frets higher. Except now when you play the 10th fret there on the D. And that's what I was talking about. He didn't put his pinky down on this one. It just goes, keeps that shape and just picks the D, the 9th fret on G, and then the high E and the B. Play this. So the difference there. And then back to the first chord. All right, so you just repeat everything the exact same way. And then at the very end, You basically pick through that D minor version of it once and then hit the open D and the uh, sixth fret on the B string together. All right, so you'll see um, that we, we have now moved to the next section, which is really based off kind of based around an A minor. It sounds like this.
All right, so this was pretty easy to play. We're gonna have the uh, seventh fret there, once again with your pinky, would be the best, on the D string, and then this fifth fret there on the G. So you're gonna pick the open A string and, and then cross all the strings all the way to the high E. So you have that open B to the high E string, and then back down to the G. So we have this. Then come down and play seven, six. So that's why we use the pinky here. So we just play seven on the A to six. And you're still holding that, the same two notes from before. And when we hit that, we just pick all the way across, starting from that fifth string again, all the way back down to the D string. So we have this all together. All right, so you do that four times. Um, now we have some fills here um, played over that. The second time you hear that riff um, that Kirk Hammett would play. Now, like I said, most of Kirk Hammett's uh, parts, uh, lead parts and, uh, and stuff in the, the harmony sections, you take care of in the second video. So make sure if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe uh, and make sure you ring that little bell so you receive the notifications when the video is released so you'll get all the uh, you'll be able to see all the solo stuff that, that's coming in a couple days all right so but just Kurt Camus fills now it's just with a distorted tone real quick but his volume swells in on just an A minor chord so when he's doing this he has this and then when he does this chord he swells in with it so you can just do that with a and then and obviously it's on a distorted tone. So he just does that over that, the second time you hear that chord progression, that, that riff. Now we have this uh, next riff, which I affectionately call the Hangar 18 riff. I think Dave Mustaine all had a hand in writing this song. This is probably one of the parts he did because this, these same chord voicings happen in, the, in Hangar 18, the Hangar 18 intro. <laughs> So that one's fun to play, um, and it's not that hard if you if you play it like this, which is the uh, it's just a regular D minor chord. But you know, use your pinky there on the the B string there for that third fret. So you just pick across from the D string all the way to the high E, and then just place the third fret down on the G, and then the same pattern. Now move that up to the fourth fret on the G, and you're gonna have to take over that. Uh, third fret on the B string with your middle finger. And then move it up to the fifth fret there on the G, third on the B, and fifth fret on the high E. All right, so like I said, the first time you hear this, then it goes back to that A minor with those fills that Kirk Hammett has, those two chord swells and then uh, back to this little Hangar 18 riff. <laughs> and over that, the second time, Kirk does some swells on this, just the five, seven, eight on the A string, just kind of repeat that with volume swells with a distorted tone, all right? All right, okay, now we get to the first, uh, kind of the things start building up into the song, and we get to the first um, heavy riff. Um, and the way this sounds on the actual recording is a little bit different than they really play it live, but I'm gonna do it the way they play it live um, um, because it, I think it sounds good. Anyway, so kick in the distortion here, and we have this. All right, so that riff now, you're, you're gonna build up into that riff. 
coming into that leading up to it. And then we just have the open A string. And what they do live here is just, just along with that open A, there's just five, seven, five, seven on the D. Now the recording, it sounds like, you can hear those top notes in there some on the original recording. So you can decide to do full power chord or just the, what they do now. So, and then it goes to the power chord of the seventh fret of the A, down to the sixth fret. They just kind of chug on that sixth fret and the A string there. And then up to the seventh fret, hit that a few times and slide up two frets to the power chord of the ninth fret. So this. Then back to that hanger 18 rip. This time you're just gonna really heavily palm mute the strings across and obviously you're on the distorted tone. And it just keeps transitioning between that kind of heavy riff and then back to the, the, the D minor riff. I'll quit calling it a hanger 18 riff. Where it's arpeggiated in your back. And then you'll hear them do that same, continue that same process twice through, but instead of arpeggiating those, you just play the. Which is just the open D string, and you're just taking the notes up, that bottom note in the chord that's moving, and that little uh, riff that's just the second, third, fourth, fifth on the G with the open D. love in there I'm sorry all right so you get the point there and then we get to the three minute and 18 second mark and we have this really cool um, single note riff it's kind of mostly single notes but it's a little tricky to play um, so I'll just play th through it real quick for you here we go To that riff. All right, so we start with the the low E and the open A string together. So we d hit that first, and then to some low hits on the low E. So all all downstrokes here. Then back to the open A and the open E string. So it's a little weird when you it's harder to control them with both open strings. And then we have two, three on the A. And then we go back now to the same kind of pattern with the open A string, but this time against the first fret of the low string. So you hit those two together at first and then you start separating them. So way this. Now do it with the first fret there on the low E. And the rhythm changes there. It just goes two, I mean, open A, two, three. So we have this all together. Then move up your first finger to the second fret there. So you can see right there, it's the same notes as the open. It's the exact same riff except you have the second fret there on the low E. So you have to hit the open A with that second fret on the low E. 
Then you start separating the notes the exact same pattern. And then two, three on the A string, two of the uh, G power chord, which is the third fret on the low E and fifth fret on the A. And then, then three, two on the A, the three on the low E. So we have this. So you do that whole riff four times, and then we're going to basically move it up so to the third fret. So the fingerings obviously have to change. Uh, I'll show you the way Hetfield fingers it and the way I like to play it. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier for me, so you can just figure out which one you want to do yourself. All right, um, so the riff up at the third fret sounds like this. All right, so it's just the third fret there on the um, A and the low E. It's the same pattern as... Sorry, this. And then five, six on the... A string. Then you place the, your middle finger at the fourth fret there on the low E, and you play that with the third fret on the A. So the same riff we did now, it's just three, five, six. Just playing again. So we have this so far. Three, five, six. And we're still moving up the notes here on the low E string. Hetfield likes to come over and just play that note on the low E the fifth fret there with the third fret here. He just, he plays it like that. Like, so it's the same rhythm, hit those two together. And then he just plays five, six, and then slide into the, I just move into the eighth fret there on the A and the sixth fret on the low E. So we have this. Then six, five on the A, six on the low E, and repeat. If you want to keep that note going here, you can just do it like this. So that's the difference than I play it, whatever. All right, so after you play that twice, you go back to the. All right, so you're gonna hear that with the. So just to, so you know that that heavy riff, this, you'll hear this over. So when, you know, whenever you hear that in this song where you do that little riff and you hear that little dump bump arpeggiation, arpeggiation riff, it's just that riff that we did, the A minor thing we did earlier with distortion and really heavily palm muted on every string. And that goes over this. All right, so we get back to, um, uh, this is really the, kind of the, the single note riff stuff. Uh, starts us into the, the harmony section and the solo. Um, so then leaving that solo, we have um, just uh, the, the same little uh, section, and then we uh, get to the single note riff again at the 5 minute 22 second mark, but this one has a slight variation, and they keep taking it uh, through two different frets as well. So the variation means they're basically just repeating the very first half of it. So it sounds like this.
so now this is the same riff we did before, so it's not should not take that long. So it's just the first half. We did that little zero, two, three, that kind of where it kind of stops the riff and just plays three consecutive notes on the string. Then that's the halfway point. You go back and just repeat. So you do that off the open low E um, four times. Then you take it to the second fret. So just like the same time when we did it at the bar here at the third, it's the same thing, but just back at the second. And once again, just the first half. Repeat. So you do that four times there at the second fret. Then the same riff at the third fret three times. And then the same riff at the fifth fret three times. So the open fret, uh, open string, open fret, the open string and the second fret four times and three and five three times. All right. Now from there at the six minute and nine second mark, we are getting through this monster song. Um, we have this. So you continue playing that riff, which is just the power chord of the fifth fret and the low E, and then seven, six there on the A string power chord. After doing that four times, you add that A minor. All right, then at the uh, six minute and 38 second mark, we have that, um, D minor riff, and underneath that we just have power chords at the fifth fret of the, uh, off the A string. The D power chords played. That goes on underneath this. Now this fourth time, watch this. So what's going on there? We have this. Second time, then the third time, then the fourth time. So we just go to the low E power chord, and you can do that D minor riff there four times. The fourth time there to match that low E. Instead of doing the fourth chord, we do this. And you actually let them ring out together, they're not muted. It's just the fourth fret on the G, fifth on the B, third on the high E string. Just kind of goes like that. It's two guitars, but. All right, so uh, then we're, we're getting really close to the ending here. And we have, uh, I'll show you a little fill some, uh, that goes over this next riff, because it's pretty quick. Uh, but at the six minute and 54 second mark, we have this riff. All right, so it's pretty simple. It's just the third fret power chord on the low E string, then the second fret a few times, then back to three. And then what he does here, he hits the low E string and grabs that full power chord off of the A string, which is the seventh fret of the uh, A string, and then the ninth on the D and the G, and the open B and the high E. So we have this. So it kind of hits that, then the chord, then all of them. So this. Back to the same rip down here. And it's just like the open low E, then the power chord hit, hit once. And kind of two hits. Now at the seven minute and 48 second mark, we're gonna end that section uh, I'm not done with that. I'm going to do those little fills that uh, Kirk Hammett's playing there. We just end that session with this. So, and then just jump up to the fifth fret on the A, uh, A and the fourth fret on the D twice. 
and then over to the seventh fret of the um, low E and the fifth fret of the A. All right, so that ends that, and then it takes us back to that intro riff. But over this riff, we have just her cam it playing those 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 fills. So we had the 12th fret on the B, 14th fret on the G. So this unison bend, you're going to bend up that 14th fret. And then the same thing here, 12th fret on the high E, 15th fret on the B string. All right, so you know you got, you got a little bit of lead stuff in here. <laughs> All right, so then we go back through the intro riff again, and then we, it finally takes us to the very end of the song here. That intro riff, when it ends, just kind of with just a strum of, of that chord at the end. Uh, then we get the 8 minute and 30 second mark of it. We end the song like this. Big rock ending. All right, so it's mostly power chords, except that last chord, they do a full D minor, at least one guitar does. So we just have the power chords off the A string, fifth fret, then three, back to five, back to, down to one, back to five, then up to eight, and back to five. And like I said, when you get to that chord, play the full D minor if you want, just the bar chord. So all together. All right, so it's a great track, just like as a rhythm guitar thing. It's some really cool riffs there. Um, but in the next video, I'm going to take a look at that harmony work and the solo as well. So I'll see you then.